right, welcome to the next edition of Inside the Artist Studio. I am so excited to have Billy O'Donnell um, wiring in to us or phoning in to us from Missouri. Hey, Billy O. Hey, how you doing? This hey, is good. fabulous. <laughs> Anytime right. I get to talk to you, it's a good time. Yeah, same here, same here. I always tell people like, you got to meet Billy O. He is just <laughs> such a genuine person, always a smile and just, just so excited about art and artists and you share everything. Like you, you just don't hold back, which is, it's just, I mean, for someone like me, I think that is just amazing because I'm always wanting to learn what you've got going on. Thank you. Hey, so you had, um, my gosh, you have had quite a few years. Um, there's been some remodeling project stops and starts. I know yes. your, your daughter got married to one of the most famous sumo wrestlers. <laughs> yes, yes. I like, I want to meet him. I'm really in awe. <laughs> He's a fabulous guy. I, I, I love him. He just looks like when you Google him, um, wait, say, can we say his name? Yes, Yama. Yama? Yama. Yeah, his, his name is Yamamoto, but uh, he goes by Yama. Uh, and, and just he was a two time world champion, won all kinds of uh, regionals and things like that. He's been on a lot of movies. He's, uh, you know, he's, uh, you know, my daughter just, uh, you know, she, Every time she came home, she brought like a bigger guy, it seemed like, and you can't go much bigger than Yama, you know? <laughs> he like, right. Like, you know, I think that's why I want to just meet him because I see photos of him and I'm like, you are a mountain of a man. Like he's tall. And yes. yeah, he, he was in our house for a short time for about a week and there wasn't anywhere you could go in the house that you weren't in his way, it seemed like. <laughs> <laughs> right and your house was like was this your, was small. yes yeah and this was your like a grandparent home? yes my grandmother's house yes it's an old log cabin it's about it's getting close to 200 years old and, wow. and, uh, and my studio is a log cabin too on the same place here and uh, it's, this is where my grandmother used to milk cows you know right right here you know what? it's a it's a it's a it's a wonderful legacy to to honor that that past the uh you know and i'm i'm from a family of nine kids so i feel like i won the lottery being at grandma's house you know it's yeah. just it it's a it's another part of me connecting with the world around me you know and i think it's such a fascinating thing that i mean artist studios come in all shapes and sizes and and um but to to have that of, you know, your grandmother's house and that heritage and presence, you know, I mean, I, I remember you've talked about growing up and get just getting your hands in the mud and dirt and I, you know, and kind of sculpting with that yes. clay um, yes. as a child. And that seems to still keep coming through. And we're going to take a look at the work we're getting here in January um, but for a two-dimensional painter, your work is really sculptural. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I it's just the, the paintings come alive. I, 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 you can see it slowly progressing in my work, the, the surface, and I've just become fascinated with the surface in terms of color, in terms of stroke, in terms of pattern, uh, just the little ridges with some of the bristle strokes to change that dimension to it so i i've uh i've just become fascinated with that for quite a while yeah you know i think when viewers you really do need to be in person in front of this work because it just takes on something it, it just has a life Thank um you. that that that's, that's you know. the other thing too it, what you said life right there yeah when, when the surface gets gets when i develop the surface when you walk across the room, it feels like the painting moves. There's things that happen with the light and it, yeah. it just bring, it just makes them come alive. And that's you something know, and that, I like. And that's such an interesting thing because I think 
a lot of artists, especially, you know, um, artists from the 14th and 15th century, and, and, you know, it was all of the glazing and the under layers that create that. And also that sort of trompe l'oeil thing that just as you move around the painting, you're doing kind of a different thing to get that motion and that undulating color. And you know what, let me just, I'm just going to do a screen share because I can Perfect. imagine people listening to this are like, Hey, what about us? <laughs> <laughs> so let me do, I'm going to, I'm going to share this. Um, and so we can talk about, um, uh, about some of the work and, and I've pulled up here, um, Quiet Valley Antelope House. Um, and so just a little preface, the work that we're getting here in Denver in January, this is work you traveled West. You love to come West, yeah. or at least you tell me you do. Yeah, I, I love, I love going out West. I, I uh, it, there's a few places in the world I really enjoy going. And I love going out West, especially to this little Canyon right here. Over the years, I've visited it many times. Yeah. And uh, it, it, you can almost tell when I visited it by, by the way I work. Oh, tell me about that. Well, it's just, I mean, you can just see the progression of the paintings getting thicker and, and you know, just, just richer in color, you know, just moving along like that. The, you know, just again, now it's, it's more about the surface. This painting is a little nine by 12. And what I do is I, I go there and I will block in a painting. I will take color notes and I'll block it in. And, you know, we're talking about, um, we're talking about my perception of reality and what I do to make that perception more of a visual impact. And, and it's done, so it's, it's a combination of being there, but also being, uh, bringing it back and spending time with it and working it and, and pushing, pushing the, the, the texture and pushing the color and, and developing the painting as a whole. So it's, it's, a, it's, it's a real dance uh, getting it to this point. Yeah. Well, because you are, I mean, when you're out on location, you're fighting the elements. The sun is constantly moving, you know, the wind's kicking up. Yeah, and but but years ago when I did plein air, I I was more I was I was more into the the act, the the purity of that moment, the poetry of the moment. Whereas now I take part of that moment still and I bring it back, I bring it back to the studio and I I I just push it further because I, and it all started with, uh, whenever I did a plein air painting, I always noticed some little thing of value or color that I would change and it would make the painting better. And and that has slowly progressed mm. to this point. And I, and I feel like I make the painting better. Yeah. You know, I think that is an interesting thing. Um, and I've talked about this with a number of artists, but the the plain air thing, like plain air painting is not new. Artists yeah. have been essentially plain air painting for hundreds of years. It has become a marketing term, yes. essentially, yeah. right? And then these competitions and it's like, uh, you know, get your panel, timestamp it and run, um, yeah. which is in my mind, an anathema to creating art. It's the opposite of creating, you know. Uh, and and I I did that. I I did it, and, and I won the uh, I, I won several of these prestigious events like the Laguna Plein Air. I got I got best to show, and uh, and it was just one of those things where okay, I've done that, you know. And I I but I want to go I want to go deeper into the art world, and then I I actually had a small group of students, and I taught for five years online. But I just didn't teach little things. I got deeper and deeper into the creative mind with yeah. each one of these artists and pushed it further and further. And it's uh, and that whole journey just really enlightened me. It gave me the excuse to dig deeper and and to to understand more about the artist and where they they need to go. and And that has taken me just doing that is taking me to a point where now I'm in. 
I'm, I'm in training. I feel like I'm in training where I, I feel like there's a consciousness, a, a something special that happens. Mm. Because when you look at some of my older videos, I talk about getting in the zone and things like that and wow. how to pull yourself out and how to get back in. And for me now, I'm getting I'm getting deeper into being in training. It's not just, you know, okay, well, I'm just going to pick up and I'm going to copy these, you know, these colors and, and do a painting. It's become even deeper where I am in training, where I, I'm fasting, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm doing all these, I'm doing exercise, I'm doing these things to hopefully bring me a meditating, I'm, I'm to, to, to connect me deeper to the whole creative spirit and the whole uh, depth of where my art will take me. Oh, and, that's I, so and I have to do that because I, 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 but it's taking my, it's taken my life to get to this point. Mm -hmm. And now it's this, this point has taken me well, uh, uh, to some really wonderful places. Oh, you know, I, I have this conversation with a lot of people about well, what is art, right? And I, yeah. and I know artists kind of talk about it too, but it's sort of a del delicate subject because, I mean, there are people who say anyone who calls it art is art, like Andy Warhol, right? You know, I mean, he really pushed and broke open boundaries. Um, but I always kind of maintain that um, there's a level and that I think, I mean, I kind of hold artists that I admire to a higher level of and I think it goes to exactly what you're talking about is that uh to me it goes to why why you why now why this work um and I think with representational art um you you almost have more hoops to jump through than um people who are doing non-objective work in that someone doing non-objective work can say hey, you know what, the spirit moved me, I'm exploring these things, and I'm, you know, and okay, fine, f fine. But when it's representational art, we can go to Canyon de Shea, we can go there and say, well, you know, yeah, you got kind of close to it, right? Yes, so, yes. so you, when you are the artist, now I want you to bring your soul. Your wow. art yes. is you. Yes, and, and 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 that and that connection, you know, that whole connection is key. Yeah. When you when you, uh, I mean, I, I I've I'm, I'm I've almost gotten to the point where I actually believe that that when I do a painting, that there is somebody out there the painting is for, mm. and those paint those and and that individual will find the painting. You know, oh. and. and uh, I, I, I just, it's, it's just a mantra that I, I really believe in. Yeah. Well, you, so you get into the whole philosophical end and you get into the, uh, the deeper end that, uh, that manipulates your thing. I mean, well, I shouldn't say manipulate, but gives you clarity in your thinking. Mm -hmm. I, I think so it's, uh, but this one, th this one, I just, you know, i I saw the colors and I put them in and it just came together really quite wonderfully. But, but, you know, always I, I, I whenever I get the painting back in the studio, I probably rework the whole surface in a painting. You know, so this whole, one, so I just, as we were talking, I just, I just switched to the next painting, crisp light Canyon de Shea. Um, and so that's the one that you're seeing now too, right, Billio? Yes. Um, and so I'll tell you what struck me about this painting is that, and I, I, I try not to suck artists into the line shape, color, texture, design conversation, because yeah. yeah. we can go down that rabbit hole and then everybody else's eyes glaze over. They're like, I want the story, um, and which I want to, but immediately I'm like, Wow, you just swept me right into this painting. It was yeah, like it's, it, it, it's um, you know, and with these paintings, I I've gone a little bit more towards um, areas that 
aren't the tourist attraction, I would uh, I would slip into areas and kind of disappear, you know, to a, to a degree. But um, uh, just, I mean, just uh, there's just so much there that I get excited about and get yeah. and get into it. So these paintings, some of these become very personal for me because they they're just not at the typical stops. I, I really had to search for these and time the light and things like that. Yeah. And you know, I, I think there is something of a reverence that you bring to this work. And and I don't mean that in, in like a religious way at all, but I think there is um, something spiritual. Yeah, and that, and and that's the higher plane that's the that's where you want to take it to you know that's it's where you want to go you were mentioning that you know kind of with you mentally like meditating and fasting and things like that and that you also said that what i'm seeing is this evolution in your work and i'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about the evolution in particular, uh, maybe this piece and <clears throat> okay. The evolution is the evolution is years ago I would set up and I'd paint, and it was more about the spontaneity and the energy of that moment. Okay. And uh but as I painted more and more, I I would always go deeper into the education, I would go deeper into the thinking. And uh, just just go just go down the rabbit hole, and and my and each time I thought my work was achieving more and more and more, and it's and and, and sometimes you you reach a point where you're like you know I don't I don't know if I I think this is where I'm going to be you know, and then lo and behold you 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 go further. You know, you it's it's never it's never sitting still and and being um, being consistent. It's uh, consistent in the way of always portraying the image. For me, there's a lot of artists that that paint in a particular way, and I I'm not knocking them at all because there are subtle changes to their work. It's just it's just smaller, more more minute <clears throat> in their development. Mine, I I tend to hit harder, but I tend to, uh, I tend to, to, I don't hesitate to take a painting where I want to go with it. Yeah, and uh, and that comes from the experience of understanding a lot of issues. Like like years ago, years ago when I would go and paint the model down at the guild, I would. I would challenge myself. I would go, okay, I'm going down and I'm going to, I'm going to paint the model, but I'm going to use nothing but muddy colors, mm -hmm. or I'm going to go down and paint the model and use nothing but pure color, or I'm going to go down and paint the model with exaggerated forms, or I'm going to use track marks of the brush strokes to, mm -hmm. to follow the form, to shape the form. I'm going, you know, I would, I would create all these artificial problems to, tackle the to 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 have a greater understanding of how to take the artwork where you want to go because there's because i noticed that when i first started doing it when i painted i would i would step back and i would see what i needed to do i have this this agenda in my mind and then i would go back into the painting and then at the end of the three hours i'd be i'd, I'd say to myself well, I didn't listen to a thing I wanted to do, and, <laughs> and 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 it's that it's that training that that of of the mind of the creative mind to push it a certain direction, and and so I got to the point where I would go down week after week after you know for years where I would have these different ideas, these different concepts that I was going to do each time I approached a model, yeah. and I think that what that has done is it's influenced me for to this point in my life where I can always, even while being in the zone, I can pull back and I can then consistently take the painting where I want to go. And that is not an easy thing to do. Yeah. 
um, it, it almost I seemed- I hope I didn't get off track, but I, that's- um... No, it's, it, it seems like an evolutionary process though, right? Like we have to learn to walk and then run and then, you know, do backflips and somersaults and, you know, so, but, but I mean, I think what I'm hearing you say is having that foundation and now, you know, you, you are just this wellspring of, of where can I take this now and not putting yourself in a box, not creating artificial limitations. And I, and I, uh, I, I don't have any deadlines in my life right now. And what that allows me to do is allows me to pursue these paintings and push these paintings. I can take you upstairs and I can show you literally hundreds of paintings that are still being worked on and still being pushed in the right direction because I still haven't solved the problem. You know, there's, there's problems that pop up still to this day, but I would love to say I've got all the answers, but sometimes I can't take who I am now and go back into these older paintings and make them who I am, who, who I was then, who I am now. And that, um, so it's, so sometimes uh, for years and years and years, that's um, one of the things I used to do is every year I'd, I'd burn a hundred paintings. And oh. because I just felt like the world did not need another bad painting. Yeah. Uh, lately I've been holding on to them more and more because I always, one of the things I always do is I always sit down with my paintings after a trip or, or after a process and, and I would look at these paintings and try to understand uh, the next chapter in the book. Yeah. The, the, where, what, what is unfolding? What is unfolding? And I've, I've seen this unfolding for a while and, uh, and it's just, it's just something that is, um, I'm really excited about. I love what I'm doing. I, I'm just fired up and just so, so excited about everything I'm doing right now. You know, and, and, and probably if you'd asked me any time in my life, that's the way I was always yeah. excited about it. And, but you know, and you, and you get into the whole philosophical end too, where you ask questions, yeah. you know, like, um, um, I don't enter art competitions. I, I philosophically sat down and thought about it. And after having many crazy makers in my life, I just realized that I just didn't need to enter competitions because I, I don't need to validate my art and who I am. I, I am. I, I don't want anybody. I don't want anybody and anyone's opinion between between me and my art and the way I think about it. So I, I, I get into these. I ask a lot of these philosophical questions and it's just conversations I have in my mind. And oftentimes um, Peggy, Peggy, my wife, Peggy, she knows <laughs> I'm struggling with concepts and things and, and ideas or philosophies about what I'm doing. I hope I'm not getting too boring. No, you know what? I really, I, I kind of wanted to call out that thing that you said um, that you no longer um, um, submit work for competitions because you don't need that validation externally. Yeah, I, I stopped doing that probably, I think it was back in 19, 19- um, I think it was 2001. I did do plein air events, but yeah. I, you know, I, I didn't do any more competitions. I got into, I, I, I got into this event and, uh, and sometimes you have to look at the way you react to things and how your mind reacts to things. Oh, and yeah. I got into this, uh, it was my third show in a row and I got into this, I was going to be a signature something and I was going to, and I forgot to ship the painting into the show. <laughs> and it was like, I, I, you know, you got to stop it. You got to ask yourself, okay, was this something the universe was telling me or was it, was it something that just wasn't important to me? And I just realized it wasn't important to me. And, and that was the moment that I philosophically started tackling some of this stuff. Mm-hmm. So you, so I look at things in a lot of different ways like that. And yeah. uh, I try to, uh, I, 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 tr- I try to uh, follow who I am and what I do, you know, and that's, and that's key and that's important. You know, I, th- I, th- I think it's such a fascinating thing. I, um, 
oh, I'm thinking of 12 different ways to approach this. Um, but but the that you are alone in your head a lot when you're working, right? And then to be able to talk about the, you know, some of these existential issues, right? But yeah. then, but then also, like, I love going back and looking at, you know, put out all the work and say, what's changing, what's evolving, what's growing, where am I pushing out? Um, you know, and so from this recent trip too, that we're going to be getting some paintings, um, you know, I'm wondering if you would talk a little bit about, or if it's even possible to really put into words what you're seeing happening now, like with this new work we're getting, and I've just pulled up Blue Gap from Canyon to Shea. Um, oh. Yeah. I love that blue. That blue, mm -hmm. just way in the distance, that little gap between those two plateaus and the sun setting right in that gap. Mm -hmm. um, I just, I just, you know, I just, I felt like as though that that was almost a sign. You know, that, that was, uh, you know, you start to add, you start, if you think about it too much, you start bringing these things in. But, it, you know, it's one of those things where I actually set this painting up. It's a 16 by 20 and mm -hmm. I blocked it in and I preserved some of the colors I actually saw, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, but it was, it was late in the evening and uh, I just had to, you know, this is one of those paintings that sat around for a while. You know, I didn't just go out last week and do these. I did these paintings back in, uh, I want to say May. I think it was May I was out there, at, or yeah, May, right before I went to China and uh, um, did these. And, and uh, but I, I just, you know, you talk about just a powerful piece and the, the way everything lines up, yeah. you know, in, the, in that center between the gap, the two, the two clouds on each side, that little valley coming down, then that, that big red shape with the green tree in it. I, I, I just, uh, it was just a lot of fun. You know, it, so um, not to get nerded out on this area in Canyon Shea, but like those trees, they're thousands of years old. And yeah, there's some very old ones there, yes. Really yes. old. And, and when a forest fire sweeps through, it, I mean, it takes a hundred years to, to get a tree, you know, back growing again in those. And it's good. It's important that it happens, but it's also like these, this scene is, I mean, it's thousands of years old, you know? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, uh, so it's, it's a, it's a place I really like. It's a, yeah. it's a place I, I love to go, you know? Oh, so this is a video. Oh, here we go. Okay. A movie. okay, wait. So we're, I'm going to go ahead and play this so people can see um, into this thick paint. Yes, this is great. Yeah. Nice. And this is just so wonderful. And that, how, you know, I mean, to me, like to have the confidence to lay a brush stroke down and leave it alone. You know, I mean, I think that's, that's pretty incredible. Hey, I'm going to go back this way. All right. Okay. So, cause I'm super professional, but I feel like I, <laughs> I feel like we missed something. This one. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Valley of color, Canyon Shea. What size is this painting? That is a 12 by 16, but I, I, I hope to do a bigger one of that someday because that I just love, I love that series of a series of shapes coming out oh uh, yeah and it is you know these are these incredible land formations um and erosion and glacial erosion stuff like that but they're just they're architectural the way you handle them yeah that was that that was just a lot of fun yeah these are but it, it, the, the, like i said the painting just didn't happen in plein air i had to bring that back to the studio Hey, talk to me about, you know, you were saying that you've got some of these older paintings that you've hung on to and, and 
we're going in and working on some of them again. Now with oil paint, it takes a year for oil paint to dry or more. Uh, I think some of mine might take a little bit longer. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you can go back, but not, it's not really malleable. So well, the, but yeah, the thing I like about it is when you go back in, when you go back into a painting that has thick paint on it, you have to put thicker paint on it. And then that's what makes it, 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 it does things that, um, it gives me a wonderful feeling inside. I'm not sure why, but it just yeah. does, you know? Yeah. Wow. But some of so, them, you, some of them, the older ones, you haven't been able to go back in and rework. I, you know, I do every now and then because I, I, uh, I think one of the, one of the things I do, Rose, is I, is I look at some of these older paintings and I see in these paintings, I not only see, I remember where I was and what I was doing, I remember where I was hesitant and it allows me to come back in. And when I come back in and I do something to the painting, I fix a little spot where I see that there was questions or I wasn't 100% confident. It, um, it gives me a little bit more of a window into my mind and not being saying my saying to myself, don't do that again. You know, don't be afraid. Really? Don't be afraid to jump. Don't be afraid to do it. Don't be afraid of what the perception of the world is. Mm -hmm. Only worry about yours. And and so it's it's given me it helps give me a little clarity. That's one of the things that happens with my paintings upstairs. Wow, I've never pulled that out of me before. You did. <laughs> you yeah. know what? That like this is this whole evolution of you that I just I'm so fascinated by it. I can't wait till we're together and can talk more about this because that's one of the things I love about getting together with you. We just we just ramble on and on. You know, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, just, I just get so fired up every time I talk to you. It's just to me, it's amazing because, like, I don't have the. This is not a creativity that lives inside of me to create paintings or sculptures or, you know, but but I recognize something's happening, and and what I love about doing these recorded Zoom calls with artists is that these these can live on and you're talking about this this pinnacle time in your life when things when you're looking back and moving forward without thinking about oh are people going to judge me or who cares who cares it's not what i'm here for that's exactly right that yeah is so true. i mean to to you know so like what we have historically in our our letters and you know, <clears throat> what people think the artist was thinking. So, I mean, I, I just think this is astounding to be able to talk to you about this and and where the work is going. I'm excited. I'm excited. Well, you gave me, actually just talking to you, you gave me, you know, I express, that's the thing I like about it. I express things that I haven't really verbalized. Mm -hmm. That they're there, but I just do them and I, and now that I verbalize it, I've got an understanding. I don't know if that makes sense or not. Totally makes sense. Yeah, okay. it totally makes sense. Um, it's like you can be really um, angry or anxious or upset about something. And then when you say it out loud, it's it's either like, uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Or you say it out loud and it's like, Oh my God, I'm just an idiot for getting all wound up about that. But it's yeah, something about when you speak it. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I yeah. usually never get too upset about anything. So yeah, no, yeah, I can see that. I don't have that moment. Like, <laughs> they're very rare with me. Life right. is too short. Exactly. Exactly yeah. right. Uh, okay, so my last question, I'm going to put you on the spot. Are you coming out in January? Will we see you in yeah, January? Man. Peggy and I are coming out. We Woo! are excited. We, this is going to be fun. Good. You know, oh, yeah. The only thing I don't like is that cold weather, but. <laughs> I'll see what I can do. What's that? 
I'll see what I can do about it. Well, thank you. Thank yeah. you very much. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, man. Billy, oh, we're miss, thank you. We're this is for anything. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Um, yeah. Hey, I want to thank you. Thank you for carving out some time for me today. And um, we will see you in January for contemporary realism. And um, I, we're going to set up some events there too, and talk about, you know, contemporary realism in today's terms and, and how artists are reflecting the environment around them in, in different ways. And so um, looking forward to continuing the conversation with you. Good, good deal. I, I am so excited. I really am. We're yeah. going to have fun. We yeah, are going to have that's fun. That's what it's all about. It's all about having fun. Yeah, I think it so. Really and is. yeah, and bringing people into our world and, and helping yeah, them understand. I can't, I can't wait to get to talk to some of these other artists in this show. This is going to be fabulous. Yeah, it's going to be really nice. We've got a terrific lineup of artists who are doing some crazy yes. things. <laughs> no, you do. You do. You, do an, you, you just do an amazing thing, Rose. You just, you, I, I just uh, admire you for everything you're doing. Well, you're, just, no, you're just shaking up the art world, and I love it. No moss growing under these feet. I'll there you it. go. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Filio, till yeah. I see you again. Yeah. Um, Thank you, thank you, and uh, we will be talking soon. Oh, looking forward to it.